You've been called the happiest person in the world by popular media after you volunteered. Yes, popular media. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the university study. Um, well, what was this all about? You know, what, why, what, what, how did you get this, this status? Yes. Um, and what is, what is this happiness that you, that you have? Yeah, it's not the status, it's a headline. <laughs> and, uh, well, uh, anecdotically, it came that um, you know, we have been doing collaboration with uh, neuroscientists and psychologists including Paul Ekman, who study emotions, uh, state of mind, you know, some uh, well-being and suffering, and also some specific uh, states of mind like uh, kindness, anger, and so forth. And so many of those have been studied in, in the brain already, and it's not that we know here is the center of our anger, but we know there are networks and specific areas that get activated individually and connected to other areas when anger arises or where empathy comes or where loving kindness comes and uh, this regulation process the anger area would be regulated down if you were loving kindness and so forth so then the idea came well what happens if people have been training their mind towards that on attention for instance focused attention vigilance is there any different from, from untrained subjects so that idea came to uh, um, in, in a movement called the Mind and Life Institute that was uh, originated by Francisco Varela, who was a Chilean-born neuroscientist, one of the leading neuroscientists of his time, who passed away now, and Adam Engel, who was a American businessman, both were struck by the interest that the Dalai Lama had in science, genuine interest, curiosity, and uh, sort of a scientist of the mind. And so they organized meetings so that the Lama could meet great scientists and discuss with them. But soon it turned out that uh, it was more than just coaching the Dalai Lama. He had very incisive questions and he was you know, proposing agenda for research almost. So then that you know, took more and more um, magnitude. And uh, then that's, especially in, two, that's not 25 years that's going on. But in 2000, there was a meeting on destructive emotions and how to deal with them. Paul Ekman, Richard Davidson, Daniel Goldman, Francisco Varela. And then the Dalai Lama said, well, what, what can we do to help society, to contribute something useful to society? So the idea of launching a, a research agenda with the first experienced meditators, rather than 50,000 hours of meditation, and see how they function, they are able differently to activate, for instance, the network of loving kindness. And then, if there's a difference, how you reach there? So do you need, a, do you see a difference after four weeks? Or does it take 25 years? So that thing has been going on now for more than 10 years. And immediately there were very interesting, you know, groundbreaking sort of findings about that mind training really has a very profound impact on the way you can use your brain. I mean, all the repercussion, whatever, cause the causation effect is, in, is involved. And, uh, and particularly, uh, we focused on three types of meditation because meditation means just mean cultivating. Uh, there was one on loving kindness, compassion, whatever you call it. And then one on focused attention. And then one was more like open presence, which is a vast state of mind in which you have a, a, a very great emotional depth, uh, in, in emotional balance depth. But as if there is, a, with Paul Ekman, if there is a sudden explosion, you will not jump like crazy. There's more stability while still very, very, very aware. So that's many, tr mostly three kinds of many kinds of meditation. So the one on, on loving kindness uh, activates, uh, happens to activate areas of the brain which were already known to be connected with very positive emotions. You now people who are extremely satisfied with their, with their, with their quality of them every moment of their experience, not just like their affluency or conditions, outer conditions, but inner conditions for well-being, those who, who, you know, the opposite of depression, let's say. And it was also found that those people have a stronger act, act, activity in the left prefrontal cortex, the, the balance between right and left is shifted to the left, while depressed people have the opposite sort of... Uh, so, then it was found with those meditators, and I happen to be you know, uh, let's say chronologically one of the first uh, guinea pigs, uh, that it was uh, very, very strong, stronger than was ever reported in neuroscience. 
uh, tilted toward positive emotions. So, so there was a, a Australian documentary from ABC that was doing something on emotions, anger, loving kindness, happiness, and so they came to report on that research. And then the, suddenly they said, well, maybe you know, this is one of the happiest person in the world, and that was it for a while. And then one day, the a journalist from The Independent here fell upon that documentary and said, hey, that's a good story. So here's Mr. Happy, the happiest person in the world. The scientists found him. So then after that, it was out of control. <laughs> Next day, it was Italy and Venezuela, you know, and there's nothing you could do. I made disclaimers, but I, I apologized to my scientist friend, but this was too late. So here comes Mr. Happy. So, <laughs> so of course, there's six billion, now seven billion human beings. So it's hard to find who is happy than the other one. And especially among those tr supposed to be trained meditators, there was 20 of them now have been gone to the lab, and they all have the similar results. So at least I have 20 colleagues, no matter what. <laughs> Men and women, monks and lay people, all the only common factor is that they all went through extensive cultivation of loving kindness and other such uh, skills. <laughs>